Okay, in this video today, I'm going to show you guys how to use Raycasts, and we're also going to make it, um, hold on, let's get over here, so that the controller is set up now, I can show you this, how to draw a ray like that, so you can visually see it, because usually you can't see it in the editor, and how to uh, make it functional, and I'll show you what it does. I'm uh, changing the position of an object that, that it hits, and I'm pretty sure it's going to have a collider in order to hit the object. So I don't think this has a collider, therefore, it, oh, it worked. So this does have a collider. Basically, what I set it up to do is just move to a random location as soon as the raycast hits it, which I think is actually pretty cool. <laughs> it's kind of stupid, but... <laughs> It won't work. Wow. Okay. Maybe it doesn't have to have a have a collider to work. Let's walk in that so the ball starts bouncing. I think that'd be the coolest thing to do it with. Let's hit the ball. Now the ball is over there bouncing. Anyway, I'll show you how to set it up. So I have my script here under my interaction script because that's the best place if you also have the script to put a raycast to make the uh, ray visibly show up and you can do this without actually having a ray just to test it out you do debug.drawarray and um, if you want it to happen from or like if you want it to go in the direction you're looking you want to start from the main camera or whatever camera you have so in this case you could do game object dot find with tag and then type in main camera because your main camera is automatically tagged with that. In this case, I made a game object for the main camera and then I set it to the main camera uh, down here. And so when you do a draw ray, this is the start location and you can think of this as the end or the direction either or so you do player camera dot transform dot transform direction kind of like movement except you're not adding or setting it equal to anything you're just saying forward and if you don't give it a specific value I think it just goes infinitely um, in the forward direction I gave it 3.0 f for a float value so it should go three units in front of the starting position now with other types of raycast like the actual raycast you have your start position and you actually do have the direction you do not set how far it goes in this part which is kind of annoying I think personally and then you have the object you hit and you have to put out before that and I don't understand why but you know <laughs> I'm not a genius at this stuff I just I learn it and I, I do it and then you can put um, it it requires a layer mask or I mean well that's what the fourth parameter is supposed to be but you can also put a distance here and that works just as well and I can uh, do a tutorial on layer masks if you would like me to. I've done it in my actual game with Raycast. And uh, the reason I did that was so I wouldn't Raycast the ground. That's the one thing I didn't want to Raycast. But in this case, it doesn't really matter because I'm not really doing anything with it. You can put this in an if statement, as you see here. And then the object you hit is stored in this variable which is set up here in raycast hit uh, I don't know if you can make that public or not never tried it don't really care and before you do anything you have to do hit dot transform so if you thought of hit as the game object itself um you can't really I'll just show you if you do hit dot trans uh, that doesn't really work. <laughs> Hit that game object, nothing comes up. Is it's not really? I guess it's not stored as a game object. I don't understand. 
but you always want to do hit that transform and then whatever you want to do after that so you can say dot get component and then health but not everything in our scene has a health uh, script on it therefore it's going to throw errors and that's why I was saying you might want to put a layer mask for the ground for example because if you put health on everything else but the ground then whenever the raycast hits the ground it'll just throw you a bunch of errors down here and I already showed you what it did all I'm doing is setting the position to a new position and anytime you set a position with the vector 3 you have to put new before it and I just used a random random location and for the y value I always set it to 2 but yeah so as you can see this works but you can do whatever you want with it uh, it's a lot more useful with the layer mask and you can uh, you can obviously set it as far as you want like I said that's three units and I believe that's just from outside the collider so I wonder if oh yeah you can teleport yourself if you like just just look straight down that's another case where the layer mask is useful oh no we teleported the ground didn't we that's weird everything um <laughs> yeah that's why you want to ignore the ground and, and ignore yourself as the player but yeah I guess that doesn't really matter at the moment this is just kind of a tutorial I, I guess I'll show you the layer mask later on because I don't remember how to do it off the top of my head I've only done it once before um but yeah that's all there really is to it um, in that situation like I said you probably should use the layer mask some situations you don't really need it so I don't know see you guys in the, ne the next video